the never been the insufficiency of laws. It's, it's about the human beings. It's about those who investigate these matters, who prosecute these matters, who defend these matters, who preside over these cases. And then the lawmakers. I would not agree with Dr. Noja that a lawyer's challenging the constitutionality of a law is absurd. It's within the person's right. And the fact that the National Assembly has made a law does not mean that it is automatically right. Many sections of a law can be struck down. We saw the Supreme Court do that in Oji Kalo's case. We saw the uh, Court of Appeals strike down certain provisions of the ACJA. These are legitimate challenges. But the worry arises when, for example, a, a defense counsel uses a preliminary objection and takes it to keep a case in limbo for 10 years, even though this Administration of Criminal Justice Act has come in to stop that, and the Supreme Court decisions are affirming that they cannot use interlocutory appeals to stop trials. But when gimmicks are introduced, every decision by a court is appealed, or, and at the end of the day, witnesses may die, witnesses may lose interest, witnesses may become untraceable, or may even be intimidated. And then a short investigation, because it's a value chain. If any link in the chain is weak or dysfunctional, you can't have a seamless movement. And then when you also, even the appointment of judges play a role, when you also appoint wrong persons as magistrates and judges, and they, are, or they do not have a good grasp of the law, or they do lack the integrity to decide based on the facts and evidence presented and the law, you have a problem. When you also have lawmakers who do not really study law, because even in the pre during the colonial period and post-colonial period, corruption cases were prosecuted under the penal code and criminal code. These laws were introduced to create new agencies, not necessarily, and then create new offenses, especially money laundering, in the light of um, financial action, tax force requirements, and all that. Not necessarily that the, some of these offenses cannot be pigeonholed under existing provisions in the law. So it has never been sufficient sufficiency of law. It has been our ability, and also the Nigerian world doing things. Uh, he want to, he will destroy his family, him, leave him now. Oh boy, why are you doing this? He yeah, is your friend. Just see as you go manage him. After some time, everybody will lose interest. It's a societal tool. So when we blame it on the laws, when we blame it on the judges, no. And even when you come to the judges, the judges, the courts are the end points. So whatever mess, if there's a mess indeed, ends up in the court. And people want to blame the work. For if, for example, there has been short investigation or, or um, um, statements you obtain in violation of the law, maybe confessional statements, or certain procedural errors occur, of course, the defense counsel would want to depend on them to get a case thrown out. But the bottom line is that every of these things have to work well. If you all listen to the cases of the Nigerians now who are, who are standing trial in the U.S., it will be one no cake in victus, and then the hush puppy, um, except for the person who has done a plea bargain, on the horse puppy, I'm not saying anything about his skills. But if you look, if you read the investigation report, you see how they took time. In the horse puppy one, they said there was even no complaint. They said the the the, the flamboyant lifestyle displayed pictures on Instagram made them take interest in him. And they started investigating him. They saw that some phone numbers, some email addresses were linked to certain transactions. So they red flagged him and started investigating and started linking him up to. And I still insist I'm not commenting on his guilt. He's presumed innocent. But you hardly see a Nigerian investigation that gives you such, such that even when you're reading it, in your quiet area, you may be able to say, mm, I think there's a point here. You don't get that in Nigeria. It's only in Nigeria that the police and even ICPC, FCC, they seek to only convict people based on statements obtained. Nobody builds up a case file. No uh, investigator comes to tell you the detailed work. He says, he made a statement. Uh, this is his statement. And the court simply comes. There's nobody who also tries to justify that the contents of those statements are actually probable or true. No spade work is done. And these are the issues we are talking about. Detailed investigation, detailed drafting. Sometimes so charges are drafted in a very laughable manner. In a manner that does not, con it does not even, even the section that are charging on the charge does not reflect or the evidence available will not sustain them. I've seen fine work done by investigators, proper convictions that were watertight. I'm not suggesting that in all cases it's bad. But sometimes the attention goes to the ones that are lost. And they do not really define the system. But they only point us in the direction of these are probably areas we may need to look at and make changes so that this value chain will be able to benefit the society so that we'll be able to. And even recent things you read in the news, what we also talk about is when you talk about laws, is the ability of human beings to circumvent them and go scot with the political will to bring some people to justice. 
you read more things in public space, the public condemns more people than ever get charged to court. And there are cases you would expect to see in court, and they never get there. They're also part of it. Let me stop at this point. Mm. Thank you very much.